A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. We are going to do competitive math problems yet again. You can find the whole competitive math problems playlist down there at the top of the description. It's an AIM 1986 problem 5 problem and we are going to find the biggest natural number n such that n plus 10 divides n to the third power plus 100. As always I'm going to show you my approach on how I solved it the first time around and yeah I hope you are going to enjoy this video. It's going to be kind of a chill one for the weekend okay. Tiny little bit of mathematics, nothing too special, kind of easy but still a lot of fun to watch and do for yourself and other than that go over to Flamblemess too for way more maths content you can find it over there posting regularly also follow our new Twitter handle STEM merch it's from Sexstar Sexstar69 and me this is our shop that is going to officially open up next Friday so yeah if you want to stay updated um, follow our Twitter handle STEM merch and now we are going to dive right in so fingers we want to find out when does uh, one polynomial divide the other one. So when does the polynomial n plus 10 divide the polynomial n to the third power plus 100? And for this you basically go um, about using the Euclidean algorithm. At first I'm always someone who checks if we need a remainder or not. And at first we are just going to assume that there's no remainder and see if it works out. Meaning overall we are going to say that we are going to express our n to the third power plus 100 as being nothing but n plus 10, okay simple polynomial division, times some other polynomial. If we are dividing a third degree polynomial by a first degree one we are going to get a second degree polynomial out on the other side. So something of the form um, a n squared plus b n plus c in some way. But we can already find out a few coefficients such that we have an easier life. All right. So I mean we want to get to n to the third power. So the leading coefficient is hence nothing but one here. So what do we need to multiply n by to get n to the third power? Well obviously n squared. So that was easy. Then we are going to get ourselves way well a part um, which is just a n. So we can't really say what it is right now. And also we are going to get the coefficient of n to the zero of power basically. Overall we need to equate this to 100. So what times 10 gives us 100? Well obviously 10. So yeah this already does the trick and now we can start uh, multiplying stuff out and see what we are actually going to get. I mean this is kind of easy. We are going to get n to the third power plus okay then a n squared. Uh, after that 10 n squared plus 10 n squared and after that what are we going to get? 10 n so plus 10 n Mm, then we are going to get 10 a n plus 10 a n and then plus 100. Okay, this is the last part that we are going to get. So we are having our polynomial here. So we are going to factor a bunch of stuff and see what we need to equate the coefficients to such that we get n to the third power plus 100 out on the other side yet again. So we are going to equate this to being nothing but or we are going to factor out the n squared basically. We are going to get a plus 10 times n squared. And if we were to factor out our n here, well you might notice that 10 is also a common factor of this. So what we are going to get is, <laughs> that's an ugly um, curly bracket, what we are going to get is nothing but 10 times, okay, 1 plus a times n. And now you might notice that we have a few coefficients going. I mean we don't have an n squared or an n on this side, meaning a plus 10 and 10 1 plus a must be equal to 0 in order for this equation to hold. Meaning overall we have to have that a plus 10 is equal to 0 and we have to have that 10 times 1 plus a must also be equal to 0. I mean 10 is by definition not equal to 0 as the successor of 9 so that doesn't work out. Meaning overall we need that a plus 1 is equal to zero. And maybe you can already see a contradiction here. I mean you can just solve this system of equations. You can try it out. You can uh, subtract one on both sides. You're going to get a being equal to negative one. But on the other hand you're going to get a being equal to negative ten. <sighs> really doesn't work out for a being element of natural numbers. So this right here did not work out this approach. But that's not bad at all because we now know since this didn't work out we have to have a remainder on the other side for this to actually work. Meaning we are going to reformulate what we had up here and we are going to say that n to the third power plus 100 is hence nothing but n plus 10 times some second degree polynomial plus a remainder r. 
Hmm. I mean, yeah, this is what it needs to be right now. Because um, by the Euclidean algorithm, this is just something that needs to hold now. Okay, we are going to go ahead and see what our second degree polynomial in here is going to be. I mean, the leading coefficient of n to the third power is just going to be one yet again. So we are going to say this is just n squared. Now, our a n can also stay how it is. I mean, we can't really tell what it needs to be right now. And also, um, this right here, I mean, we can say yet again that it's equal to 10, beca because after multiplying 10 by 10, we are also going to get ourselves an r, which would suggest that r must be equal to zero by this equation, and then we wouldn't have a remainder. So this doesn't work out, so we are just going to say that what we have here is a b. Okay, it's, it's, it's just a b movie. And now we can start, um, factoring everything out, multiplying everything out, we're going to get n to the third power plus and then a n squared plus 10 n squared yet again plus, okay, um, b times n plus 10 a n plus 10 b plus r. All right, Gucci. And now, once again, let us factor the n squared out and the n out and see what we are going to get overall. This actually means that n to the third power plus 100 is hence nothing but. Okay, we are going to get n to the third power plus. We are going to get ourselves a plus 10 times n squared. Also, we are going to get that b plus 10a times n is going to be this part. So b plus 10a times n and also at the end we are going to get 10b plus r as being our remainder you could say. So 10b plus r. This is the last part. This is the leading coefficient of n to the zero of power. Now we can equate coefficients yet again. I mean it's kind of self-explanatory at this point that we need a plus 10 and b plus 10a to be equal to zero. Okay so we need um, a plus 10 to be equal to zero and we need that b plus 10a must also be equal to zero. But what do we need 10b plus r to be equal to? I mean 100 is this leading coefficient of n to the zero of power. So we also need that 10b plus r is equal to 100. And now we can start to solve the system of equations which is really easy. I mean by this first equation we have a is equal to negative 10. This also implies that we are going to get b plus 10 times negative 10 is b minus 100. We can add 100 on both sides, meaning that b is hence nothing but 100. We can also plug this fact into there and say we are going to get 1000b plus r is equal to 100. And well, this is pretty easy to solve actually. This just implies that r, or that's equivalent to saying, that r is hence nothing but negative 900. And now we can plug this fact, okay, and also this fact and this fact into what we had here originally and see how we, how we can proceed with the main question, which is the um, biggest n such that n plus 10 divides our n to the third power plus 100. Meaning overall we have n to the third power plus 100 is hence nothing but n plus 10 times n squared minus and our a was nothing but negative 10 so minus 10n and our b is nothing but 100 so plus 100 minus 900. And now we are going to see what our question is asking. We need to see what happens when we divide n to the third power plus 100 by n plus 10. So let's do this on both sides. I mean, it's never equal to zero just because n is out of the positive integers. So if we were to divide this, we are going to get basically the core of our question out on the other side, namely, this part was obviously divisible by n plus 10. This part is what we are asked to find out, meaning we need to ask ourselves the question when is 900 divisible by n plus 10. You can proceed and find all the factors of, 10 out, uh, of n out that would uh, fit down here such that we divide our 900 for example n could be equal to 20 then we, could, uh, then we would get 900 over 30 and this would be just 30 overall but it's asking for us what is the biggest n such that this holds? I mean, this is kind of obvious. The biggest n that that could possibly be is when this whole fraction right here is actually one. I mean, if our denominator would be any bigger than 900, then we wouldn't get something that's in the natural numbers anymore. So we are going to ask our question, when is n plus 10 equal to 900? 
I mean exactly when n is equal to 890. And this concludes our question and I hope it's clear to everyone what happened here. And thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, recommend channel if you like. I'm pretty exhausted today. This is why I'm going to bed now. No, I'm, I'm just going to go on the sofa and chill out. It's pretty late already here on the Saturday and I'm going to edit this video now and then it's going to go out. Other than that, thank you guys for watching and until the next video, I'm wishing you guys a flammable day. Check out Stemage on Twitter and flammable too and ciao.